Let's bring the inductor basics to an end. Firstly, I prepared the small LED circuit which is powered by a 230V to 15V RMS transformer. The output sine wave with peaks up to 25V powers the LED directly. And as everybody would assume, the LED dies in a blink of an eye. Now I connect my one Henry coil in series with the LED and it lights up perfectly with an RMS current flow of around 28 milliamps. But that is weird, because the resistance of the coil is only around 34.5 ohms. If I would replace it with a fitting resistor of around 33 ohms, by placing three 100 ohm resistors in parallel, the LED would still get destroyed. So the conclusion has to be that the inductance itself creates another form of resistance and it is called the reactance. This time, power does not get converted into heat like normal resistors would do, but in a magnetic field which builds up and collapses. Watch part 1 if you didn't know that yet. A negative effect of this is that power oscillates between our voltage source and load, which strains for example our power grid. This is also known as reactive power. We can also see that if I decrease the inductance by opening the iron core, much more current starts to flow rapidly. Which means our reactance must have decreased because Ohm's law is still active. Less reactance means more current. Let's try another experiment where we can change the frequency of our sine wave. It's basically the same setup, just with less voltage and a function generator. We start off with a frequency of 50 Hz and can see that the LED is still quite bright. Now I raise the frequency up to 10 kHz and we notice that the LED gets dimmer. So bigger frequencies means more reactants and thus less current flows. Which makes sense because the magnetic field still has the same build up and collapse time but the time where current can flow normally gets shorter. The final formula to calculate the inductive reactance looks like this. 2 pi multiplied by the frequency multiplied by the inductance. Since we know this is a variable resistor based on the frequency, we can build noise filters or music frequency filters quite easily. Here I did a small simulation in LT Spice to demonstrate that if we had a 5 kilo ohm resistor, we can keep out frequencies under 800 Hz with this high pass filter. Or we can keep out frequencies of above 800 Hz with this low pass filter. If we build this small circuit on a breadboard with an N channel MOSFET, we can for example detect the high frequent audio signals in your favorite song. It's not that useful, but you can build upon that idea. Next, I hooked up my one Henry coil with a 10 ohm resistor to my 50 volt RMS transformer. If we take a look at the voltage and current form, we can clearly see that they are not lined up perfectly, like it would be with a simple resistor circuit. This is called a phase shift and it can reach up to 90 degrees with an ideal inductive load. Here I can change it very easily by playing around with the iron core. This means the phase shift is capable of telling you how much inductance is in your circuit or even in your power grid. Another example for this would be the small microwave motor, which as you can see is an inductive load because it creates a phase shift of around 36 degrees. At the end, I want to show you an inexpensive alternative to an RLC meter, which I often use to measure inductance or capacity. It's this so-called transistor tester, which you can get from Amazon or eBay for around 20 bucks. As you can see, the precision is quite good when I try to measure my big self-made coil. But for smaller ones, like this 80.6 microhenry coil, the resolution of the measuring range is just not big enough. It's still good though, for $20. It can also measure resistance, capacity and even the gain of transistors. Very handy. And it's based on a German project from microcontroller.net. So you know it's gotta be good. 
There is a link to it in the video description. And if you buy one, you support my channel, which is awesome, by the way. With that being said, let's end the talk about coils here. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.